Thank you for listening to this episode of Christian Car Guy Theater. We are so honored that you would spend time with us. My name is Ann Alt, and I'm one of the actors on the Christian Car Guy Theater team, and you can find out all about us on this Christian Car Guy website, christiancarguy.com. We get to play all sorts of fun characters, humans and car parts. And as Miss Annie would say, many people use this pre-roll time to ask for money, but we want to ask you for something we feel is much more valuable. We ask for your prayers. And as Tammy Tensioner would say, we need stories where Jesus is clearly the hero of the story. You see what I mean? Hey, Bert Rosenberg, what would Mosey Motor Oil say? Well, thanks for asking, Ann. My friend, Mosey Motor Oil, and he is my friend. Uh, he's the first friend I've ever had that is actually motor oil. Mm-hmm. And Mosey Motor Oil would say... No! Friends, hey, look here, listen, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Prayer keeps things from getting stuck. Yeah, kind of like oil. That's what oil does. Ain't that right? Yeah. So you know what I'm saying is right. And everybody needs fresh oil. So please remember us in your prayer. Well, thank you, Mosey. Uh, say, uh, Ellen Kennedy, what would Gracie Gas Tank say? Gracie Gas Tank would say, You have started to fill our tank by just listening today. We are so excited to share our stories with you. So please pray that God would get us the sponsors and radio stations to share it with many more who may never have come to know Jesus. <laughs> now sit back and enjoy this episode of Christian Car Guy Theater. Time for Christian Car Guy Theater with today's episode, Jailhouse Justice, Part 3. Last time on Jailhouse Justice, Part 2, Bad Brad had escaped from jail aided by the nefarious Ned, who works for the nasty Noir. Brad is desperate to kidnap Allie once again because the Noir, a maniacal monster of crime boss, has kidnapped Brad's daughter Christy to make sure that Brad will bring Allie in. Brad never would have dreamed the Noir would even know he had a daughter, because Brad's daughter Christy has been living in Ireland with her mother, but she had come on a surprise visit only to be grabbed by the Noir's henchman. Christy is brought into the Noir's office. Uh, uh, just you wait. You don't really think my dad's going to let you get away with this, do you? Your dad. <laughs> your dad is my main provider of other pretty girls. Not only is your dad going to let me get away with it, he profits from it. This is how he pays for those fine schools you've been attending. You're lying. You would never do that. Never. Well, my dear, in this case, I'm betting the truth will set you free. <laughs> you see, when he brings the girl he promised to bring me, you can go free. So, you would better hope I'm not lying in this case. <laughs> Meanwhile, Deputy Eustace is out to try to find Christie's father, Brad, before he kidnaps Allie again. And all those prayers from the church seem to have raised Eustace's face shield, and he's back. He's back in a whole new way. You can hear it in Eustace's voice as he's still talking to Pastor Jack on the phone. You are right, Pastor Jack. I am not alone, and those who are, who are with me are greater than those against me. The minute that you said that, I, I feel it. I could feel it, and I believed it. As a matter of fact, I'm heading back into town. We don't need to worry about catching Brad. I need to protect Allie. That's my job, to serve and protect. You know, I have a hunch Brad's going to come for Allie, so keep her safe till I get there. Pastor Jack hangs up the phone to share Eustace's new plan with the others. Allie. Eustace feels you are a target, and he asks that we all stay here and protect you till he gets back. Bob, you and Allie stay here with everybody. I hate to do this, but I need to let our little dachshund Fritz outside. He's been inside all day. 
Yes, poor little Fritzy. He's probably wondering what's going on. Hurry back, Grandma, and please be careful. The car parts under the hood of Jimmy's Jeep celebrate Eustace's newfound faith. Frenchy Fender comments. Ah, oh, Monsieur Mosey Motor Oil, this was a great plan that you came up with. <laughs> we prayed and sprayed Wally Windshield Wiper Water, forcing Eustace to stop and call Jimmy and Pastor Jack. <laughs> and God has clearly strengthened Eustace's faith. Ah, uh, Mosey, I knew you was a slick one. Yeah, that's a big 10W40 right there, Frenchie. I appreciate your kind words about how slick I am and whatnot, but see, God is the hero of this story. Uh, yes, indeed. I, I see a new look on Eustace's face. I have never seen him so focused, so capable looking, so on the ball, so on the case. Before, he was sort of like a frictional character. You know what I'm saying, Wally Windshield Wiper? Yep, Mosey. I believe that just like our windshield wiper water, this time Eustace is going to see it through. Gracie Gas Tank, thank you for your high-octane advice. You're mighty welcome, Wally. Say, Eustace has been hit with living water and fresh oil. And I believe Eustace has gone from self-serve to full-serve now. All right, team, let's get back to town and help Allie. Yep. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it, do it, do it, yay! Meanwhile, Brad knows that Noir has his daughter, Christy, and Brad is now more determined than ever to kidnap Allie. So he's stolen a dish satellite TV truck and uniform so he can sneak into Bob, Bonnie, and Allie's neighborhood unnoticed, looking over the fence. Perfect. Just what I hoped for. That little Dotson in the backyard, that will do the trick. Shut up, you little mutt. You come with me. I'll just give it some time till they go missing their little dog, and I won't have to hunt Allie. She will come to me. Allie won't be able to resist being reunited to her precious little, uh, let's see what your collar says. Fritz! <laughs> Meanwhile, Georgina is on the radio reporting to Eustace. Beaver County Sheriff's Office. We just had a report of a 1045 stolen dish TV truck in uniform just over in Sub County. This may be your jailbreak suspect, Eustace. Well, yeah, that's a 10-4, Georgina. I'm on my way back now. That's a probable scenario for sure. Do you have a license plate number? Colorado Baker Zebra Zebra 4035. Repeat, Colorado Baker Zebra Zebra 4035. That's not to mention it has a big dish sign on the side of it, Eustace. Just saying. Oh, very, very funny, Georgina. I'm just making sure I'm just dotting my I's and crossing my T's. There's a lot at stake here, you know, and I don't want to terrify some unsuspecting dish worker. 10-4, Eustace. Let me know if you see anything. Eustace is just pulling into town, and he immediately spots a dish van right in the mall parking lot. He heads that way as the parts under the hood brace for action. Spalding spark plug fires off first. I'm guessing that dish truck workers like most electricians. They get their supplies at the outlet stores. Oh, Spalding spark plug. This is serious, you know. <laughs> Although, if you try to arrest a dish TV worker like that, you have to go through the right channels. <laughs> Oh, uh, the right channels, you get it? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Gracie Gas Tank. Uh, I couldn't help myself. Tammy Tensioner, of all people, you need to tighten up. Do you see that license plate? That's the one. Colorado BZZ4035. Spotting that license plate, Eustace radios in. Beaver County Sheriff's Office, Georgina. You got a copy? 10-4 Eustace, what's up? Georgina, is there any state police available for backup? I spotted that stolen dish TV van, and before I approached it, I was wondering if the state police are in the area. Afraid not, Eustace. They're all out looking for a missing hiker on Long's Peak. Well, no time to waste, Georgina. I'm approaching the van now. What? What is that? 
Tune in next month for another episode of Jailhouse Justice here on Christian Car Guy Theater. Now, here's Danny Dipstick and Randy Radiator to review today's episode. Uh Uh-huh, Randy. All this talk about kidnapping reminds me of the thieves that kidnapped the prize Asian ape because they believed it was give and take. (laughs) Oh, brother, Daddy. That was punishing. However, this episode shows a remarkable thing. Look closely. Even Bad Brad has to rescue his daughter. This desire to rescue is a mirror image of God and even what appears to be the worst of us. Well, that's very reflective, Randy. It's a picture of God's bride. The church was kidnapped and eaten. But just like Eve came out of Adam's side, the church was born from Jesus' side. Jesus gave his life, his blood, to rescue us, didn't he, Randy? You're so right, Daddy. And each of us bear God's image with a desire to rescue those we care about. That's something to see even in bad blood. Uh-huh, Randy. Speaking of mirrors, if I see a deer in the rearview mirror, is that called hindsight? Hindsight, yeah. Well, that's only if he's running away. <laughs> Objects appear smaller than they appear. Wait, larger than they appear. Oh, rearview mirror. What? Oh, dear. <laughs> Female deer. Right? A drop of gold inside. <laughs> Say goodbye, Danny. <laughs> see you later, radiator.